is Ron Stevens. He is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County. I'd like to thank Elaine Bobo for helping to set this up. And, and I'd like to also, while I have the opportunity, salute the Berkeley County School Board, the Board of Education, and the superintendent's office for their access, which they've made themselves available to us on a much more regular basis than what we had years ago uh, when the Board of Education rarely talked and the superintendent's office was uh, much more uh, difficult to get on a regular basis as well. So that started opening up a bit more with Patrick Murphy when he was the uh, superintendent and uh, when uh, the, Patrick Murphy and Jackie Long and, and company got elected uh, to the Board of Education, they also became a lot more accessible. So thanks to them and to Ron Stevens, who uh, is coming on on a semi-regular basis with us now, too. Ron, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Rob. I, I'll pull that closer to you so uh, we can hear yes, you nice yes. and clearly. Oh, right? yes, that's better. Uh, good morning, Rob. I, um, you know, I, I agree we're more accessible now, but I, I think that's expectation of times. Uh, communication is is more important now than it's ever been and uh, you know I think the school system uh, along with uh, other programs are trying to utilize whatever mode of communication we can whatever method uh, I agree and, and I think you make a great point it is a product of the times and when there's not accessibility is when conspiracy theories start to really take root and then you can diagram that sentence out to the point where anything is possible once that gets started. So that is that is so true. That is so true. And uh, you know, we just want to make sure that we communicate as much as possible, but let everybody know it, it's it's all in the um, uh, expectation of transparency. So confirmed. We just did a segment uh, with Lane Deal uh, with issues with children and the courts and uh, obviously what's going on in society is reflected in the schools and i know bill had a question he wanted to get for lane but we didn't have time for it he wants to ask of you so bill yeah uh over the last week uh ron we've had representative casa we had lane obviously a couple minutes ago uh the the child protective services the whole process of going through the court system with the advocates the casa system the attorneys involved but a part of that, I think a very critical part, is the handshake, the pass over to the school system themselves. How much are you involved in these sort of cases? Well, during my, during my past life, uh, yeah. the last decade serving in, in pupil services for, for Berkeley County Schools and the past two years, um, last year and then what we started this year as superintendent, um, I have personally seen an increase in in the in the involvement um you know it's needed and and we're we are happy to work with you know the guardian ad litem i heard that that she had mentioned uh, before um you know it's the schools are bound to try to m make sure that information is protected about students so we're not we're not out there sharing this with just anybody that walks in and says that they're representing a student but guardian ad litems come with um, a certain amount of um, credence they have a, a letter from from the courts that, that give them certain rights and they're treated like the, uh, parents they're given the same information and access that parents are so when it's pre presented to schools uh, we work with them uh, as closely as we can I I'm, I would imagine, and I, unfortunately, I have not been involved directly, but I would imagine the children that are in this this process, this system, are very fragile emotionally, very fragile in a lot of senses. Uh, how much extra, and the schools do provide a lot of tender loving care, how much attention do you give to a student that has come from a, the, the court system? Well, Bill, and how do you and how do you do it? I guess. Have you been reading my notes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With that handwriting, <laughs> it's no terrible way. handwriting. I know. I understand. Um, and I'm not a doctor, yeah. um, but um, it, you know, the um, the program that that we were referring to with the uh, guardian ad litem, mm -hmm. those obviously are students that are in need, and. You know, there there are also the students that, that um, the schools tend to have relationships with because of that need. So when when that information is presented, 
um, the schools are prepared to share that information with with um, counselors and and specifically the guardian ed item that we talked about um, but you ask how much care can be given you know we we just recognized as a matter of fact uh, Monday night at um at our most recent board meeting our handle with care program and that is you know it mirrors this need and that's where our law enforcement um, agencies you know the city the county and the state all are participating in the handle with care program and that is any time that they are involved in a, a situation after hours during our during school hour whenever um, if a student resides in the home or is going to be affected by that there's a form that that we have worked with those law enforcement agencies to, to get filled out and officers then will take the time to fill out a form that says you know this student's life has been affected please handle with care now they don't go into detail about what has happened in the home but it's it's a step so that the school recognizes that this student or these students were all in um, precarious situations and need special attention you know we don't know what our students come to school with every day and um, you know that's that's been a message my father is a retired educator and that's a message that he he brought home um, to, to me as I was growing up so uh, we just don't know what other students uh, and other families are going through and these are programs that are going to help them did that come out of the Martinsburg initiative Ron it um, seems I remember Maury Richard talking about our this. our our involvement in Berkeley County started with the Martinsburg uh, Police Department. Yes, mm -hmm. with Maury. Yeah, that is true. The Handle with Care program is. Do you know is the, is the county on board with that as well now, or is it still just the city? Um, well, yes, the county is on board, and as is the state, and they have been for some time now. Uh, it was spearheaded by Maury and the city, but even in the beginning, when it was when he was requiring his officers. To, to participate in that we made it available to the other officers um, to the other agencies I mean and um, you know the participation was spotty but it has picked up and in the last couple of years uh, like I said on Monday night we actually represented the officers that have made the the, the most referrals who made the most um, difference um, and I wish I could think of the, the three names of the officers off the top of my head but i cannot uh, recall them right now but they were recognized monday night uh at our at our board meeting for their outstanding efforts to protect our students and this has been picked up throughout the state you say well this is a program that's that actually is a national program it was picked up in throughout the state and um you know i i can't um it was chief richard's first or second year when he was there um uh with the martinsburg police department he made that a priority yeah. so there's a term of art is it mandatory reporter is that what the okay and, mm -hmm. and and schools are what is that process when can it does a teacher make that call or does it go to the administrator or what is that process uh, well you know that's almost i, I can give you an overview right. uh, of that right now but that's almost too much to to talk about in one radio segment there's there's a there are uh, training sessions that are involved with that. Um, mandatory reporting simply um, requires teachers and anyone that is in a in a position of supervisory over over um, young people to report in a certain manner in a certain time. Teachers, all school board employees are mandatory reporters. So if they see something, they now are required to say something. And when I first got into education, all you had to do was report that to your supervisor. Uh, in the last, I think it was four to five years, that has changed. It's now re you're required as a mandatory reporter to make the call yourself. You can't push it off. Well, or, or. Y you, you have to contact uh, the local law enforcement agency, the state law enforcement agency, um, DHHR the Child Protective Services mm -hmm. division of that, you have to actually make those reports. Um, and that's required by law for everybody that's a mandated reporter. 
And so it's, if you're a teacher or a supervisor, or whatever, that's a lot on your plate. It, it is a, a lot. It's a great responsibility. It, it is a lot. And, uh, you know, we've, we've gone, education has gone from, um, I was just talking to someone yesterday, as a matter of fact, I had a great aunt who, um, it's, actually it's my, my wife's great aunt, but um, she was a very, very lovely woman who spent 40 plus years in a one room schoolhouse. And uh, her responsibility was to get the uh, get the candles burning, get the coal burning, clean the school, do the dishes, feed the kids, split the wood, um, you know, wood, coal, whatever um, they mm-hmm. had to to uh, that was available, um, and then teach the kids and send them home. Today, uh, with the amount of communication that we started this conversation with before, and the transparency that's out there, the expectations are are shifting, and schools are are expected. Uh, not only to provide those uh, educational services, but also to provide a, a variety of other um, mental health services. So, the requirements. I'm sorry, John. Just yeah. real quick to finish up on that because I, have, as a coach, I have to take a lot of these same courses that the mm-hmm. teachers take. I think my course load is up to nine, which pales in comparison to what the full time teachers uh, take to start the school year. But the the amount of things that you have to know as a teacher, not counting education in the classroom can be overwhelming it, it is absolutely overwhelming and that that is something um you know I'll credit our our school board uh they've recognized the you know these are just additional requirements uh over the last 10 to 15 years the additional requirements that have that have been um, added to education um education employees the the trainings that they have to go through the things that they're required to, um to do it, it is a lot it is a lot, and it adds up. You know, if you add one or two re- trainings a year, might not seem like much, but over ten years, you've added twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do you have a sense for in, per unit of time in, in a year? Are cases initiated from the schools, as in alerting the the, the the authorities? Is that something that happens once a month, five times a week? Is it is it a frequent event? Um, it does come in cycles, um, you know, and there's periods of time that lend um, the, that lends um, it, it, the time itself of the year lends itself to to more, um, I guess, targeted. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to say there, but it depends on the time of year. But if you're asking me to give you an average, it is. Um, you know, we we deal with this on a daily basis okay. at the school level, and it may be that people are just calling to check because now, because of the requirements, people are so uh, nervous about it that they don't want to miss anything. So they're calling to check, and you know, so we, we'll deal with those calling call, to check. Call they they will call um, our pupil services department to just say, um, you know, I saw this today. What do you think? And uh, so, so we, we talk through those things. But if they are made directly aware of, uh, of a child endangerment situation or if it's reported to them, they're required to report it. Uh, and, and it's up to the other the departments that they report it to to do the investigation. Ron, a slightly different subject, but again, under the, uh, the guise of, of discipline. Uh, the legislators this past year passed a, a requirement for suspension uh, uh, from the class a couple of times. You then had to set out the class. If this happens more than once or twice during a week, you're suspended from school. Uh, I've heard some reports, the, uh, some of the educators uh, and pa- perhaps other leg- uh, legislators as well say, and they've described it as a train wreck in action. Uh, I don't know enough about that to really respond, but what is your impression of this new legislation? Well, are, are you referring to the legislation as being a train wreck? No. Well, yeah, the product, the product, the fact they had to go through the uh, uh, the suspension and then kick somebody out of school if they've uh, been disrupted in class. You know, again, this this comes with communication, transparency, um, and, you know, and, and and us being out here talking about it, more people being aware of these types of things. That that's not new. Um, when students misbehaved in classes, they were to be removed, and, and that that's been in um, West Virginia code for years. Uh, it's, Is there something new though? Well, the 
they've they've reshaped it. They've reshaped it, and it received a lot of um, um, a lot of attention. And there are committees that are supposed to be looking at how discipline as a whole is is uh, tackled in in each district. Um, so it, there are some new new parts to it, but um, but you would not go as far as say a train wreck. Well. Uh, I, I wouldn't say a train wreck. I, you know, I, I think it's a train ride, and I think <laughs> you know, and I think that you you've got to uh, adapt while 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 the train's moving. Uh, but I wouldn't go so far as to say a train wreck, meaning that it's it's done, it's over, and it's 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 a disaster. And not, not I would not say that at all. Yeah, I've read only bits and pieces, so mm-hmm. I'm not in a position to either argue one way or the other. But I do know there's been a reaction to it. Uh, well, there, there is a quote-unquote discipline committee that meets through the yes. Board of Education, if I'm correct on that, Ron. Do you know the details of the, that or their next meeting? Uh, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have that with me. Um, I know that um, it, you know Dr. Dr. Branch in pupil services – uh, assistant superintendent is uh, is on that committee and reports to me what is is taking place mm-hmm. after they have those uh, committee meetings. But mm-hmm. um, right now they're talking about creating a tiered system of discipline. I think is what you're referring to, and with 55 different districts, and you can imagine the number of different opinions on the committees around mm-hmm. those 55 different districts. That may be what they're referring to as a train wreck. How difficult it is to to create this tiered system of, of discipline. Are they? In, I'm sorry. No. That, are they intending it. to standardize it throughout the state, or will each county kind of have their own free dis, uh, definition of what uh, dif- discipline is? Well, it is my understanding that that is the the discipline of the students in in each district is up to that district to to determine. So mm-hmm. the board of education has has worked with. Our, our administrators to put together this team and they're they're working to develop a, a system of, uh, a tiered system of discipline that we that we do have to put together and uh, and share but i don't think that that's going to be something that is common you know while there's going to be a tiered system in every district, what is included in that tier system may be different. Might be unique to each county. Right. right. Just about three minutes left, uh, Superintendent Tom. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, this this is Bullying Prevention Week. Uh, we talked about what prevention bullying bu- bullying oh, prevention week, um, and we do have our annual event at the uh, at War Memorial Park. It is going to be Thursday, the twenty first, from five to seven. And uh, you know, I wanted to draw attention to that. That's a that's a huge community event, and a lot of uh, a lot of people are going to be participating in that. Um, also, uh, the governor, uh, our our board actually recognized the governor's proclamation of September the twenty second, which is Friday, as Service Personnel Day, and um, our board uh, uh, recognized that Monday night at, at our board um, at our most recent board meeting. Also on the 27th, which is next week, is parent-teacher conferences for high schools. The traditionally, the further um, further up that um, students get away from kindergarten, the less involved the parents are at parent-teacher conferences. So I'm asking those parents to to, to get involved, be, um, contact the school, make sure you're able to participate in that. Um, I want to draw attention to two outstanding. Um, people, uh, employees here in Berkeley County, Carrie Prather, who was the Berkeley County Service Personnel um, Person of the Year, and uh, Rebecca Catlett, who is our Teacher of the Year. Both were recognized in Charleston recently, um, and they're outstanding, uh, outstanding people. And one last plug, we are constantly looking for um, – uh, employees in various areas. We're looking for substitute bus drivers. We're looking for bus drivers, period. And on October the 28th, from 10 to 12, if you are interested in working in uh, Berkeley County Schools as a bus driver, you will have an opportunity to go to our bus garage and actually drive a bus, uh, which I think is is pretty interesting. So we're hoping to uh, get some interest in that and, and pick up on um, – available local people that are interested in helping with our transportation where's department. the uh, bus garage from? uh the bus garage is located on route nine between uh exit 16 and hedgesville high school it's it's out there on the 
you're headed towards Hedgesville High School, it'll be on the right. Eric Kiesecker going to be out there Eric giving Kiesecker's a one-day tutorial? Eric going to be there, absolutely. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. I tried to talk to him a little bit this morning, but he was out um, actually on a run. Driving buses, we're, yeah. We're, <laughs> he's he's – uh, Covering on a, a couple of runs. All, what kind of salary, all hands on deck. What kind of salary and benefits come with bus driving? Uh, it, it's we've upgraded that, and I, I don't have that number with me right. to, uh, today. But it is uh, very competitive um, with with other industries that involve drivers. And um, actually, we've had a number of people who have contacted us across state lines because they they believe that our benefits package is is better for for that so very nice anything else on the sheet i don't and uh shout out to elaine for putting this together for me so i just wanted to uh thank her and let's keep the lines communication open superintendent stevens is back again on october the 4th that's the next time he appears on the schedule thank you so much we appreciate your availability absolutely